In today's video, I want to talk about a topic that I think is really important to understand on both sides of the football. Uh, as the game continues to evolve and the margin for error you know, gets smaller and smaller and teams are able to break down opponents at a higher level on both offense and defense, I think it's really, really critical whether you're playing 12-man football up here in Canada uh, or 11-man football in the rest of the world, understanding where the tells are built into your offense and defense. Uh, and one of the things I want to talk about today is running back location. So this is something that, especially with the advent of RPOs and zone read, has become an incredible indicator for defenses um, and also something that offenses really need to be aware of because many defenses right now, your run fits or your your even your cover down rules are can be based on where the back is located. And also as a defense, you need to understand the advantages you can gain as a defensive coordinator by you and your players understanding, you know, where the back is located offensively and what tells that's going to dictate um, or things that's going to give you as a defensive player in terms of pre-snap read and even your ability to execute post-snap. So first thing I want to look at here is just understanding what do I mean by back set? I mean the location, the tailback. Okay, so a lot of people talk about they can be in gun strong, they can be in gun weak, okay, or they can be in the pistol, all right? You can talk about being two or away from the back. So, for example, right now the Will linebacker is away from the back, okay? The, the star nickel player is to the back. All right, the mic would be to the back in this sense as well. The running back can also be in the pistol. Obviously, if you're dealing with some kind of under center team, okay, this is um, you know less relevant. Um, but most teams are seeing at least a lot of shotgun these days. So if the team you're playing is in gun, running RPOs, there's a lot of things you can take from that. I won't even get into in this video on the depth of the running back. So, you know, are they uh toes in front of the quarterback? Are they toes behind the quarterback? You know, are they even a little bit deeper than that? If you're getting some sort of, um, you know, whether it's an RPO mesh or zone mesh, sometimes you'll see them a little deeper than that, okay? Uh, or even the width of the running back. Those are all also things you can use to get a tell on run pass, on what type of run you're getting. Um, but right now I'm going to exclusively talk about how defenses can approach attacking an offense um, that is giving you a pre-snap location for the running back. Okay, I'm also then going to do a members only video uh, on pistol. That's going to come out later this week in ways you can use pistol. And also later this week, I'm going to do another video on offensively. What can you do with this understanding of your own self scout and looking at your own back location and how you can do things to attack some of the really, really creative things defenses are doing right now to, uh, to make your life hard as an offensive coordinator. So taking a look here. Okay, let's put the running back strong. Okay, so one of the most popular things teams are now doing is RPOs, obviously, and typically we're not going to talk about uh, flop reads here today or defending flop reads. We'll talk about that in the video I do about defending the pistol okay, and running the pistol. But um, taking a look here, if the back is to the field, most teams are RPOing using the receivers to the side of the running back. That means that this field overhang has to be out of the fit. Okay, so for example... Right now, this uh, this offense is set up to read uh, this star nickel player, okay, over top of too strong. If you have a run fit, okay, where this player is going to be responsible for a gap, okay, they're going to be able to throw that RPO really, really quick and easy. You know, say it's the stick route, okay, on that out route. All right, they're going to be able to throw that, run your corner off, and have it all day. Same thing with a double slant concept. OK, if we flip the running back into the boundary. OK, now our field side receivers are less likely to be involved, at least in a post snap RPO. OK, or sorry, in a pre or, yeah, in a post snap RPO. OK, and now here you're going to want your boundary overhang or your will linebacker out of your run. Field. Well, how do you do that? Right. How do you set yourself up if you're getting RPOs? And we're going to start with RPOs because for the most part, you know, there's a lot of great resources out there um, on base run fits. Um, and RPOs are something I'm sure it's challenging a lot of defenses right now. So in both of these, you'll notice I had the mic. Our mic is fine to be in the fit, okay, as our fifth fitter. It's how are you going to get a sixth fitter, okay, to account for all six gaps. That's not at least in post-snap conflict. So 
one easy way to do uh, to do that in your front. Okay, let's bring the back over here because the clip I have is with the running back strong. Okay, is to set the three technique to the back. So we're going to set the three technique to the back. Okay, we're going to create that wall, especially if you're getting zone blocking schemes. Okay, we don't want to let this thing wind back or cut back. Okay, we're going to have our three technique and we're going to give the open B gap away from the back. This is critical. The open B gap away from the back. Okay, our overhang player, in this case, our, our nickel star is going to be totally out of the fit. Okay, we're hanging on the RPO here to the field, whether it's bubble, double slant, stick route, glance route from number two. Okay, we are all over that. We are going to play three on two to this RPO side. Now, our mic can take the back, the A gap to the running back. Okay, you can talk about, you know, that whole other video here. Uh, on how to play that technique. But from an assignment standpoint, you know, we're gapped out to the side of the back. We're going to force this ball front side. You know, in this case, obviously, we're sitting our defensive end. So if we get a down block, okay, or a zone block from the tackle, okay, our defensive end is sitting, staying in the C gap. He's got a B gap defensive tackle, so he's going to force the give, okay? So we're going to be playing that. Shuffle technique, we have the quarterback on any sort of zone read pull. Okay. And then with the running back on this side, again, if you get a team that's running pre-snap RPOs or flop reads, something we'll talk about in the offense of, of, you know, counterpart to this video, it's something you need to be aware of. But most teams or lots of teams are running the one side RPO and they're just blocking over here. Okay. So what, what most teams will do, Set the three tech to the back. What well, lots of teams will do, shouldn't say most. Lots of teams set the three tech to the back. Nose guard's obviously responsible for their A gap. Okay. Have the quick play the C gap. And then you'll have your will kind of fold into this fit in the B gap, getting you your sixth fitter opposite the running back, who's theoretically not being read again, unless you have some sort of flop read or pre-snap RPO. If you are getting some sort of flop read or pre-snap RPO, the ease to that side. So let's say you have a team, you know, that's also running, you know, let's say flanker screen out here. Okay. They're running the flanker screen out here. And if your will is diving in the box right away, they're throwing that. You can have your end play a heavy technique. Okay. Which means they're going to go inside any run block. Okay. They're going to spill any puller and knock that ball again. We're anticipating run away from the back here, given the location of the back, knock that ball out into the C gap where our will linebacker can hang on the RPO and then rally down uh, and make that tackle. Okay, so that's one base way of playing it. All right, setting your three technique to the running back. You know, we could play, play that the opposite way here if we flip the back around. We want the open B gap away from the back. Okay. And we do that by setting our three technique to the back. So now at the back in the boundary. Okay. We're going to set our three to the back. Whether you bring your actual three technique over or uh, just slide your nose. Okay. Especially in, you know, hurry up world where they could move the back. Um, I would just slide my nose. Okay, again, my mic is in the fit. My mic is going to play the A gap to the back. Now my tackle and my rush are out of the fit. Or sorry, my tackle and my rush are away from the back. Okay, so let's say we got RPO here on the wheel. Our wheel is now going to be out of the fit. All right, so we're getting, you know, we're getting a stick route here, right? The wheel is going to be involved in some kind of three on two coverage where we're going to take that away. Great. Now we're not anticipating again, RPO to this side. If we are, we can always play heavy. All right, but we're anticipating because the back is located in the boundary that we're getting some kind of run to the field whether that zone that you know that's going to depend on the team you're playing okay and we're gonna sit the end force the give 
Air nose takes care of that B gap to the back. Our mic's triggered in the A. The tackle's going to force it off the table. And then again, you can choose whether you want to play heavy here against the run. And then trigger the nickel to the C gap. Or you're going to have your end. That's probably easier to the field if you're going to do it this way. Okay, you got a wider field here. That's how I would play it. Um, you could also tighten them up a little bit, widen your end out. Okay, and say, hey, we are going to take this away. All right, and we're going to fold into the box late to play that B gap. Okay, two options there. Okay, that's one thing defenses are going to do to you. If you're just consistent with your back location, okay, and you're running the ball away from where that running back's initial alignment is, is just shift the defensive line to the back. So here's a clip of that. You'll see Notre Dame here. If I can get this to play. Good. So back goes to the field. And you can see them there. It's a little bit of a late shift. Back goes to the field. We see the three technique and nose shift. Okay. You see the star here to the bottom of the field saying, hey, I'm out of the fit. All right, I'm going to hang on an RPO. Now, this isn't RPO. All right, but we'll see how quick the will triggers. Okay, and again, this player who would be being read if this was stick route, double slant, bubble, is just patting their feet. Okay, they're going to be late to the run fit. All right, whereas on this side, okay, we're triggering right now, getting into that available B gap. Again, if you wanted to, you could heavy this defensive end. Okay, and then play the will through the C gap. You'll see it here from the tight. There we go. They declare the back. We declare the box. All right, we're going to sit the end on any kind of zone read. We're going to force the ball front side with that three technique, make that cutback lane a little bit harder. Okay, our mic is going to be able to play through that A gap. Again, forcing the ball front side. And then whether you spill it, with a heavy defensive end and cancel the C with the linebacker, or you fold that linebacker back into that C gap. Either way, you end up with six fitters, and the theoretical player who would be in conflict, okay, is taken out of that conflict position, again, by taking a look at the running back, okay, and making an educated guess on where they're trying to run the football. Okay, so that's your first issue. If you're an offensive coordinator watching this and you're saying, yep, I don't really move my back around. You know, we line our back up to where the responsibility is going to be. Okay, that's the first issue you're going to see. The second thing is in protection, okay? And as a former offensive lineman, you know, I think this is something that is a huge part of the game. You're always trying to help your offensive line, find advantages for your offensive line, keep things simple for your offensive line. Well, if the defense knows where your, where your back is going to be in protection, it can become very, very hard as an offensive lineman um, to manage the situations they can put you in. So again, for example, just taking a, you know, really base look here. Let's imagine we're, you know, if you're a, if you're a, a half slide team, okay. You're typically going to slide away from the running back. Okay. And you're going to have your man side and your zone side. So, you know, if this is your slide. Okay. You're going to be locked up on the backside, all right? And the defense knows, okay, if, if our – the running back's on this side, okay, we're anticipating that the slide is going to go away from the running back, okay? The slide is going to go away from the running back. So you see defenses do two things. Number one, they're going to try and make the zone side communicate with the man side, usually with a penetrator – coming from the man side. So what do I mean by that? You know, we could get this three technique out here. Okay. Now defensively, you could, you know, just a really, there's a million pressure ideas here. One of the things teams can do defensively, if they're aware of where your back is in pass protection, is obviously try and overload that side. So that's the simplest thing. So for example here, okay, if we're expecting – my running back is going to be in pass protection on this side. Okay, if I bring my end into the B gap, 
I bring my my outside linebacker, okay, my overhanging player off the edge. I'm expecting now that running back to have to block him, okay? And then what you're seeing a lot of now is teams running pressures where they're going to try and bring a, a looper back to the side of uh, the running back. So, again, here, okay, we've said that the, the man side – is going to be that side with the running back. If we know that, okay, we want to make the man side talk to the zone side, okay? So here, this, this guard is thinking, hey, I got this nose guard one-on-one, -on -one. okay? When he becomes a penetrator to the zone side, okay, now we can wrap this tackle back around, okay, and get two players to the side of the back, okay? That can be really, really challenging. And then if you, you know, if you want to dress it up, you know, obviously that can be a five-man pressure, okay? Um, but if you really want to dress it up, you can then drop, you know, say you're going to drop this defensive end, okay, turn that into a four-man creeper. Okay, all of a sudden now we're just in our normal four-man rush pass distribution, but we got a one-on-one -on, -one on the running back, okay, because uh, we know that that, that offensive tackle there is an on-the-man side. All right, the other thing that you'll see, okay, is lots of line movement. Again, turning this into a creeper. Okay, lots of line movement where we're going to try and waste the offensive tackle to the slide side. We're going to drop them. We're going to put them, you know, on uh, on the quarterback if it's a mobile quarterback. All right, but we're going to try and get big time line movement. All right, and now we're going to try and overload. Okay, the the running back side. So we're going to bring one more than they can block. All right, so that might be, you know, bring the bring the quick inside. Okay, and bring two off this edge, whether one's the will. Oftentimes, you're going to get up into some kind of five-man look. Okay, bring the will on a spill path. Okay, and bring the corner on an edge path. All right, whatever it is, if you're able to locate and identify where the man side is in pass protection, um, you're ultimately going to be able to attack that look with a lot of confidence and try and create matchups that are tough on the running back. So whether it's the run game, the RPO game, um, or, or the pass game, uh, defenses are going to be able to look at where your running back is. And if it's consistently always to one side, uh, you know, in the run game or the pass game, they're going to be able to try and exploit that. So taking a look at a couple more things here. All right, if it's in – here's where we're talking about, again, we get a five-man look. Here's the running back in pass protection. Okay, we know that this is going to be the running back side. Likely here, the offensive line is going to go big for big. Okay, five on five. Okay, and we're going to put the running back on 10. Okay, and you'll see here again what we talked about. All right, in this case, there might not be a true slide side if they're going five for five. Okay, but we're going to try and get a looper coming back to the running back, knowing it's going to be really tough to pass that off. These two are locked here, right? We see that line movement. Okay, causes some confusion now for this guard. Both this guard and the running back are now looking at 10. All right, they turn 11 loose. Okay, and then we're wrapping back to the side of the running back, ultimately giving the quarterback nowhere to go. All right, so that's a six-man pressure. You might be saying, well, coach, they're bringing six. They're going to find a way to get pressure. Okay, here's a way that they can turn it into a creeper. So, again, we know the running back's here. Okay. We know the running back is going to be responsible most times for one to two in pass protection. Well, if we find a way to bring them both, right, we know we're going to get somebody free. Here they're dropping both ends, okay? The center's taking the backer. We expect them to take. We're able to bring both players to the side of the back, ultimately get a free hitter. We still got six on four in coverage, Right? Sure, the running back could release. All right, likely in that situation, again, we're playing some kind of, you know, zone coverage here. We've got – we're going to just take our lumps, whether it's two under four deep, it looks like here. Okay, if they try and get the back out quick, we could always try and have a D-lineman peel with it. Okay, but, you know, if you're going to leave your running back in a predictable situation in coverage, okay, and you'll see it here. Right, this is setting up to be a well executed pass protection. We got a blitzer, centers all over it. Running back steps up to take 43. Great problem is because we know the running back is responsible for pass pro on this side, they're able to bring a fifth pressure guy.
who's now totally free. And we got three on two over here. We have a six guy to pick this up, okay? But we're not going to be able to because of where that blitzer is coming from. And you're able to time that up because of the location in the back. So big ideas here. Again, regardless of, you know, what type of offense you're in, if you're running any sort of, you know, offense where you're in shotgun and you're running back as often to one side or another, okay, those are the three things the defense is going to try and do to you. Look at you in the run fit game and how you're going to RPO people and set themselves up to make sure that they're able to defend that with minimal conflict and then attack you in the pass protection game uh, and really try and get that running back in a situation where, hey, we know the running back's going to be here in pro and we're going to get one of our best players in a situation where we get the back one-on-one. -on -one. And we're able to do that if we know the back's location without sacrificing, hey, we have to bring six or seven to get that one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we're able to be a little more targeted, bring five, still get that one-on-one. -on -one. And if you're really able to take a look at how the team is protecting, and you think you have some tendencies, even trying to get a free rusher like they do here in a five-man pressure.